Glorifying the life given to keep up life and pride is the last and first in all good doings and saying, Hey, just blessing all of our listeners internationally, wherever you may be. Those of you who are in the motherland in Africa, of course, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, definitely give thanks. You tune into the nest. This is the tiger's nest, as I said, the shock of the hour. Our brothers and sisters in Canada, in Brazil, wherever you may be, in Peru. In the bellies, of course, again, the shock of the hour in your area and in your zone. Honorable Priest Isaac here with you. If this is the first time you're tuning in, give thanks for your presence with us. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, well, that's a, this is the greatest time now I could even give you some information. You could subscribe to this radio program, man. Yeah, man, and you just get a, a recording of it every evening after the program or in the morning. It comes straight to your inbox, you know, in your email. You get the program itself, the shock of the hour, and you can listen to it in full joy at your leisure, you know, and at your own convenience. You create your own library for it, and you, you save it in your archives. And, you know, for generations to come, they'll be hearing the shock of the hour inspiring your children and your children's children yes definitely give thanks and let me just say before we go on remember that the 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 equinox is at honey 
Don't wait until it's too late. The spring equinox, that sounds like a good cliche there. Don't wait until it's too late. The equinox is at hand. The spring equinox is at hand for the month of March. And of course, I'm just encouraging each and every one, those of you who are out there. I mean, if you really want, everybody takes a vacation. Everyone goes and, you know, gets away from the office at one time or get away from somebody at one time or the other. So I'm just telling you, man, if you want to have a, a, a spiritual time, a upful time, something you will remember. And I mean, to be straight, to spend a, a few moments with the Honorable Priest Isaac as well, I'm inviting you to come and visit us this March for the spring equinox. Of course, you know, the spring equinox is surrounding the whole tradition to green Castle Hill. You know that by now. I'm talking about two specific hikes. You have your hikes, you have your sunrise hike and you have your sunset hike. And of course, you'll be spending a few days with us um, officially from Wednesday the 18th to Sunday the 22nd. So all you have to do is check your travel agency and make sure that you could be in Antigua at least by the evening of the 17th of March. Yeah, that's how we're doing it this year. And as I said, we, we have so many things in store for you for that short period of five days. Yeah, man, we have so many things in store for you from the island tour, from the, the lecture that we have put together where you'll be hearing um, um, the, the, the knowledge, the edification as it relates to the region, as it relates to the history, and as it relates to Green Castle Hill. And of course, the main event is the sunrise and the sunset hike as it relates to the equinox. Remember, the equinox is the alignment, the equal day and night. I mean, wow. And we are speaking of the Stonehenge of the Caribbean. For those who have never been to it, as you would have seen on some of the reviews, everyone says the same thing, that the books and the, the videos, nothing does it justice. When you come and you see it for yourself, countless of megaliths that align with the movements of the heavens. And according to Mara Imbert, which is the astroarchaeologist from the University of the West Indies in Trinidad, she is the one that said that on the 21st day of March, the phallic stone, which you will see when you come, the phallic stone aligns with the little dipper, which for those of us who study astronomy, we know the little we know, pardon me, that the little dipper. We're talking about the Northern Celestial um, Pole. The Little Dipper is a circumpolar constellation. So when you come on the 21st of March, 21st to the 23rd of March, right here in Antigua, 2020, 2020, the year of vision, I definitely can show you that you'll be, you'll be intrigued especially when you sit amongst the megaliths we'll be having napping drumming rastafari you'll definitely be visiting the rastafari camp getting some of the idle food and remember of course accommodations all of this is well set for you when you contact me via the email um, i'll give you the whole itinerary um, um, as far as uh, your payments for your accommodations and the payments for the service as well and I'm making it clear that everything is set in a way to uh, as as you know as uh, to be as e economic as possible for yourself. That's how we set it. And of course, as I said, you could even um, make your reservations early and just make sure you could be in Antigua for Tuesday the 17th, whether you come by plane or boat or you're swimming <laughs> yeah, yeah, by the 17th. And it's from the 18th to the 22nd. Double hike, Green Castle Hill, Island Tour. You'll be visiting the Rastafari camps. Of course, remember Antigua. In Antigua, Rastafari is immune as it relates to the growing of the marijuana within the compounds and the campuses. So all of that you will witness for yourself. So it's just going to be a wonderful time. And, and of course, the lecture by our great Grio and of course our historian so you definitely gonna full joy this and i myself i'll be giving a very special lesson 
as it relates to the movements of the heavens and astronomy. I'll be taking you up on the heights and you'll be seeing the movements of the stars for yourself. I'll be showing you the different stars and giving you some ideas of how you could connect with yourself and even and even know your own star eventually once you put your mind to it and you get into that vibration. So hey, it's going to be a wonderful time. I really hope that you could make that space on your calendar. All you got to do is make sure you get the best flights. You know, the, if you want the cheapest ticket, I don't know how you roll and be here by the 17th, Tuesday the 17th. And of course, from the Wednesday the 18th to Sunday the 22nd, the Spring Equinox Experience right here in Antigua 2020. Just contact me, email me. I give you more information exactly how that will be going through. I give thanks again for, for such. Now, yes, I wanted to speak about again, you know, at this moment here, some information that I was privy to. And this is from a book, uh, a report from um, Harriet A. Washington, A Terrible Thing to Waste, Part 2. So I think it was an article, a report, but it's been read by a, a brother, an African-American brother, but it's written by this lady here. And the report itself, in fact, I'm actually giving you the latter part of it, but the, the former part, I might bring it up on another edition of The Shock of the Hour. But she will be speaking about lead poisoning, and, and um, she's uh, in her in her in her report here. She's really talking about race too. And I must say, the way that she identified what race really is is very interesting and unique. And I really would like to touch upon that subject area on another occasion, very soon. But the aspect of it now, as it relates to the lead poisoning in the community and these different things, she's going to go into it here. As I said, it's been read by a brother, but but uh, whatever the case is, the information is the important thing. So please listen in, take it in, and meditate with us. This is some serious stuff biological reality, but a socio-political construct that is useful for maintaining political biopower. But race is a social reality with real-world biological consequences, and nowhere is this more apparent than environmental racism. De facto racial segregation, mortgage redlining, and, as I shall describe, the withholding of basic environmental services are used to force racial groups into environmental sacrifice zones, where exposures to high levels of IQ-lowering heavy metals, chemicals, and pathogens impede normal brain development. Targeting the groups with aggressive marketing of especially noxious alcohol and tobacco products and confining them to food deserts that help to ensure brain-eroding nutritional deficiencies all have marked biological consequences. When it comes to exposures that limit cognition, race as a social construction becomes race as biological fate, unless we choose to intervene. We could not do better than to start with lead. Part two, the brain thieves. Chapter two. This is it now. The lead age. Listen. Heavy metals, low IQs. If you were going to put something in a population to keep them down for generations to come, it would be lead. Detroit pediatrician Mona Hanna Atisha. Anthony Miller, 10, could not sit still. Ensconced in the steely mesh of an Aeron chair at the head of a conference table ringed with lawyers, his eyes darted about the room. Anthony glanced quickly at the camera recording him, then looked down nervously then up again at his mother and her lawyer. Shifting in his seat, he worried that he would somehow give the wrong answers at what seemed like an important meeting, although everyone had assured him he need only do one thing, tell the truth. 
After a few moments, the lawyer asked, If your mother were to win the case and you had plenty of money, what would you want most? Abruptly, Anthony sat up straight, looking intently at the lawyer. I want to read, he said with audible fervor. I just want to be able to read. Anthony is one of at least 37,500 Baltimore children who suffered lead poisoning between 2003 and 2015. Baltimore. Nearly all were African American. Lead poisoning is often caused by exposure to industrial emissions, tainted water, or poorly maintained pre-1978 housing that features flaking lead paint and lead dust. Nearly two of every five African-American homes are plagued by lead-based paint. Trojan horse. Lead pervades Baltimore. One of these children was Erica Grimes. The young woman fitted the key of their new apartment into the gleaming brass lock and turned it smoothly with a satisfying click. She smiled up at her husband. Already better than their old house where the key often got stuck or jammed in the lock, slowing her down when she had an armful of groceries. It's true that the house itself was weathered and a bit shabby, but the young mother cared most about what it didn't have. Lead, a toxic metal common in Baltimore's African-American neighborhoods. She knew that children sickened and died as a result of growing up in lead-tainted housing, and she was determined to avoid that fate for her children. She was therefore encouraged when, three years after moving in, she was approached by the Kennedy Krieger Institute, KKI, to participate in a lead abatement study at her property. On its website, KKI described itself as a place where she could access an interdisciplinary team of experts in the problems and injuries that affect your child's brain. Very important. And receive personal compassionate care for your child. KKI. Moreover, it is affiliated with the prestigious Johns Hopkins University. When the KKI drew her daughter Erica's blood on April 9, 1993, her reading was a reassuring 9 micrograms of lead per deciliter of blood, which at the time was a normal reading according to CDC guidelines. These were later revised. Experts now consider no level of blood lead safe. When Erica was retested the following September 15th, her blood lead reading had shot up to 32 micrograms per deciliter, a highly elevated reading that is six times higher than the allowable limit set by the CDC. Two-year-old Erica had fallen victim to the mid-1990s repair and maintenance study in which KKI researchers undertook a study of African-American families who lived in 108 units of decrepit housing with interiors that were encrusted with crumbling, peeling lead paint. Lead paint is a notorious cause of acute illness and chronic mental retardation in young children. Among its many signs and symptoms are slowed growth, anemia, heart disorders, reproductive problems, reduced kidney function, lowered IQ, and learning and behavioral difficulties. Unfortunately, these take time to show themselves, and it is virtually impossible to tell that an infant like Erica has suffered lead poisoning by looking at her. A medical evaluation, including a blood test, is needed. Like many toddlers, Erica had been poisoned when she inhaled airborne lead dust and ingested lead dust by putting her hands in her mouth after crawling on the floor. Perhaps she nibbled the peeling paint chips from windows and door jams drawn by the sweet taste of the lead. That same sweet taste led Romans to infuse their gastronomic delicacies and wine with lead, courting the mental devastation that some historians believe hastened the civilization's decline. The lead used in everything from their cosmetics to the pipes in the empire's famous aqueduct system did not help matters. Even the words for such systems, plumbing, derived from the Latin word for lead, Plumbum, as does the chemical symbol for the metal, PB. For us, as for our forebears, lead's sweet utility has proved disastrous, and we are suffering the same stultifying fate, although today it is not jaded Roman epicures 
but poor African-American children in crumbling inner city housing who suffer most from lead. Why? It's not as if we don't know lead's horrors. We now understand that we can protect children only by banning the use of lead paint and by offering lead abatement programs that completely remove the remnants of the toxic paint and dust. As early as 1987, the CDC advocated complete abatement because there is no safe level of exposure. Yet the city of Baltimore abounds with lead-tainted low-income housing, populated almost exclusively by African Americans. Hmm. In Baltimore, statutes requiring that lead paint be thoroughly abated from home interiors have made renting lead-tainted housing illegal. But Baltimore slumlords find removing this lead too expensive, and some simply abandon the toxic houses. Cost concerns drove the agenda of the KKI researchers, who did not help parents completely remove children from sources of lead exposure. In I could imagine how the environment would be there with all those houses, people just abandoning them. You know, it's just too expensive to repair them and you know, it's actually better just to leave it. <laughs> wow, Baltimore. But listen to the rest of this now. Dead. They allowed unwitting children to be exposed to lead in tainted homes, thus using the bodies of the children to evaluate cheaper, partial lead abatement techniques of unknown efficacy in the old houses with peeling paint. <laughs> Although they knew that only full abatement would protect these children, Scientists decided to explore cheaper ways of reducing the lead threat. So the KKI encouraged landlords of about 125 lead-tainted housing units to rent to families with young children. Listen. It offered to facilitate the landlord's financing for partial lead abatement, only if the landlords rented to families with young children. Available records show that the exposed children were all black. KKI researchers monitored changes in the children's health and blood lead levels, noting the brain and developmental damage that resulted from different kinds of lead abatement programs. These changes in the children's bodies told the researchers how efficiently the different economically stratified abatement levels worked. The results were compared to houses that either had been completely lead abated or that were new and presumed not to harbor lead. Scientists offered parents of children in these lead-laden homes incentives, such as $15 payments to cooperate with the study, but did not warn parents that the research potentially placed their children at risk of lead exposure. Instead, literature given to the parents promised that researchers would inform them of any hazards, but they did not, and parents were not warned that their children were in danger even after testing showed rising lead content in their blood. This shocking research violated a number of ethical rules. To protect the safety and rights of research subjects, every federally funded human experiment must be approved by an Institutional Review Board, or IRB, which is the institution's principal body charged with protecting the subjects of medical research. One might wonder how the study cleared this hurdle given the plan to maintain children's exposure to a known toxic metal for research that was driven by economic issues and was non-therapeutic, providing no possible benefit to them. The IRB of the prestigious Johns Hopkins University, with which the KKI is affiliated, approved the protocols after helping the researchers refine their application in line with governmental requirements. Although the Office for Human Research Protections OHRP, within the Department of Health and Human Services, ostensibly provides governmental oversight of IRBs, routine scrutiny is nearly non-existent. Many modern human studies have been approved and conducted, although they are ethically flawed, sometimes deeply so. Erica was exposed from her birth in 1992 until 1994, when her parents discovered that she was profoundly lead poisoned and the family moved out. Their subsequent lawsuit against KKI alleged that the researchers were aware of the lead paint hazard and that the KKI 
violated its duty to the children by not fully explaining the dangers of lead paint in the consent form that the family signed in order to participate in the study. The parents of children in a similar study were given a consent form in which the KKI did not clearly disclose that the children might accumulate dangerous levels of lead in their blood as a result of the experiment, nor did it describe the effects of elevated blood lead, including damage to the central nervous system, irreversible behavioral problems, and death. Grimes' parents also claimed that the KKI failed to warn in a timely manner or otherwise act to prevent the children's exposure to the known presence of lead. The KKI countered that its researchers had no contract or special relationship with the study subjects and owed no duty to them. The circuit court agreed. Erica Grimes had lost. But on August 16, 2001, Maryland's top appellate court reversed this decision and ruled against the researchers. In doing so, it drew a parallel between the Grimes case and the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, a 40-year study in which hundreds of African-American men in Alabama were lied to and maintained in an infected, ill condition by U.S. Public Health Service researchers who failed to treat their syphilis. The U.S. PHS did this in order to study the disease's ravages on the men's bodies at autopsy, just as the bodies of the lead-exposed children were used to gather data. Hmm. The appellate court found using the children as biological monitors ethically indefensible, as the language in Judge R. Cathell's opinion made clear. He wrote, It can be argued that the research... Biological monitors... Wow. ...intended that the children be the canaries in the mines. Worse, as his decision noted, the children had been abandoned by the IRB that was charged with protecting them as research subjects. The IRB was willing to aid researchers in getting around federal regulations designed to protect children used as subjects in non-therapeutic research. And IRB's primary role is to assure the safety of human research subjects, not help researchers avoid safety or health-related requirements. Erica's family eventually reached a settlement of its claims against KKI, but 25 other parents in the study filed a class action suit against the Kennedy Creeker Institute in September 2011, accusing it of negligence, fraud, and battery, as well as violations of Maryland's Consumer Protection Act. At the time of writing, no decision has been made on the case. Although I am not involved in the class action, over the past decade I have worked as a consultant to law firms that represent children who, like Erica, were sickened by lead in the Baltimore studies. Many researchers have defended such studies, as one of the stranger defenses I have heard, albeit only from one lawyer, is that because virtually all the children living in Baltimore's lead imbued housing were African American, maintaining them in toxic housing during the study was not something for which researchers should be blamed. This defense is not only patently ridiculous, but also ignores the fact that some of the children poisoned in the experiment had not previously suffered dangerously elevated lead levels. And it's also wickedness. Such a claim of blamelessness is belied by the fact that the researchers were not objective, innocent bystanders. They actively encouraged landlords to rent to families with vulnerable young children by offering financial incentives. Imagine. The participation of a medical researcher who is ethically and legally responsible for protecting human subjects changes the scenario from a tragedy to an abusive situation. Moreover, this exposure was undertaken to enrich landlords and benefit researchers at the detriment of children. So it also evokes the shade of British philosopher Jeremy Bentham, who wrote, No man ought to take advantage of his own wrong. Heavy Metal Mayhem How did lead become such an important hazard? And how did it come to preferentially threaten the minds of African Americans and other communities of color? As early as the 1880s, 
Scientists realized that lead plumbing was poisoning our water, like that of the Romans before us. Hmm. By the 1920s, many cities and towns passed statutes that banned or sharply restricted the use of lead pipes. Flint. But the lead industry, notably the Lead Industries Association, LIA, pushed back. The LIA's vigorous educational campaign sought to rehabilitate lead's image muddying the waters by extolling the supposed virtues of lead over other building materials. It published flooding guides and dispatched expert lecturers to tutor architects, water authorities, plumbers, and federal officials in the science of how to repair and safely install lead pipes. All the while, LIA staff published books and papers and gave lectures to architects and water authorities that downplayed lead's dangers. Over the succeeding decades, the hazard was gradually forgotten. An early exercise in industry skill in manufacturing doubt regarding environmental poisoning. It would not be the last of such success. And as a result, the contribution of lead pipes to the nation's lead poisoning crisis continues in Flint, Michigan and beyond. Meanwhile, lead-tainted water gradually took a back seat to what would prove its most efficient route of childhood poisoning leaded gasoline. In the 1920s, when General Motors, GM, considered adding its patented chemical tetraethyl lead, TEL, to gasoline, it already had a cheap, ubiquitous, perfectly serviceable anti-knock compound for high compression engines, ethanol, the same alcohol found in the beer, wine, and hard liquor that we drink. Dude. Some beneficial effects of using ethanol fuel were recently illustrated when the airborne lead concentration of Sao Paulo, Brazil, plummeted 65% between 1980 and 1985, and so did its notoriously high crime rate. In a bid to reduce its dependence on imported oil, Kevin Drum explained in Mother Jones, Brazil began substituting lead-free E95 fuel ethanol for vehicles in 1979. By 1987, the ethanol fueled nearly half the vehicles in Brazil, and a much higher percentage in Sao Paulo, where the annual homicide rate fell from over 12,000 in 2000 to less than 5,000 in 2012. Crime rates, Drum notes, typically plummet about 20 years after the drop in lead exposure, when the data of a new, unpoisoned generation are tallied. But despite its safety, Alcohol's very cheapness and ubiquity worked against it in GM's eyes. Alcohol was in common use, and people even brewed it in home stills. So it was not novel, and therefore could not be patented. This meant GM could not profit from its exclusive sale, nor could it hope to corner the automotive market. Moreover, Standard Oil declared itself reluctant to encourage the manufacture and sale of a competitive fuel, that is, ethanol, produced by an industry in no way related to petroleum. The Standard Oil's dislike of the ethanol additive was a powerful disincentive for GM because it sought to partner with it and other energy behemoths like DuPont. So, in yet another example of industrial greed trumping public safety concerns, GM chose to use lead as an anti knock additive in a 4 to 1 mix of gas to TEL. And of course, remember, this is the shock of the hour. You're definitely in the tiger's nest, the mystic vibration. Of course, this is the Honorable Priest Isaac here with you, giving thanks for your presence once again on a uh, subject area that is very important to all of us. And uh, remember, this is the continuation, the extension of even slavery you know that's really what it is i mean after hearing that sort of discussion there and remember what you are listening to is really something that was written by harriet a washington a terrible thing to waste and basically um, you could hear for yourselves the danger of lead number one and what damage it has already done to quote unquote the poor communities as at least in this discussion here of the western hemisphere 
and really when you come into these realms you know it usually brings you into the the whole discussion of conspiracy theory and those of us who can see that a lot of the ailments in society that comes down on us is basically yes conspiracy and a plot and and an agenda some people who we are so we're so enslaved and our mind is so you know brain scrubbed that we don't even want to hear the truth now that it is clear right in front of our faces and we still hide from the truth we still run from the truth you know we just don't want to hear it we're all right can you imagine that we're dealing with people that will poison you with the vaccine bill gates man everybody heard bill gates clearly say that we need to depopulate the world and he he has the means and ways of doing it when a billionaire can talk like that you gotta be careful i mean we all heard it but we act as if we don't hear you know what i mean we just no, we don't hear and we have people that are so-called conscious defending vaccines some brilliant minds i hear from the black community defending vaccine deba debating with europeans the europeans saying vaccines not good can you imagine that and those of us who are who are black conscious you know what i mean those of us who are african conscious and you know what i mean and have all african names and Tetheru and Ang Samaj and all kind of name and we here defending vaccine. I mean that's crazy. That is mad. Vaccines? You hear what the person that was reading just said a moment ago? Len is like, if not the most dangerous, but definitely ranked up there with the most dangerous uh, product out there or ingredient or whatever rank right there with the mercury substance right there with mercury and this thing lead and mercury and other stuff uh, have been purposely it's not a mistake you know it's not as if it just happens to throw away in the bash of the juice that you were making this stuff lead and mercury and all the other dangerous toxins have been purposely put into our food purposely put into our drink purposely put into our so-called medicine to keep us brain dead to keep us drunk you know what i mean basically that's it to kill our spirit to kill our spirit our african connection all of that that is why you find it mostly in the african community in the ghetto in the hood you check it not the neighborhood because we're not neighborly anymore it's just the hood the neighbor thing gone now it's just the hood yeah so we get the the grade c food we done not eating properly already we done not eating the right thing we eating junk and we, but it's not even high grade junk i got high high grade junk you have high end junk in them junk that is on the high end yeah you have a organic chicken <laughs> yeah check it yeah yeah and organic beef and tender steaks and, and sterling or whatever they call it yeah check it but you just eat the old regular back and neck chicken you know what i mean two dollar and fifty cents a pound and yeah <laughs> yeah this is what i'm saying and it's not just that so those of us now those of us who are vegetarian and vegan and all of that nah man them people don't have you cornered too they have you cornered so all the carrots you're buying and the cabbage they have plastic cabbage now you know man plastic cabbage you don't know the chinese making plastic rice oh when it comes to the chinese that's the next story altogether plastic food you understand plastic food and genetically modified food and listen to me in a man you have genetically modified organic foods. You know, some people we have this thing mixed up in. And as Ross, we like to pull our pull the lettuce out the ground and say, yeah man, and it's fully organic, yeah man. Look, you see. Do you know what organic means? I think we think organic 
means naturally you no know, organic is is a um, uh, uh, patented word if, if you want to call it that it's it's um, uh, the right term is not coming to me but i'll get it but when you say organic it doesn't just mean that you didn't use fertilizers the word the word the word is evaded me i want to get the exact word but when you say organic first of all something that is grown organically i think it's supposed to be several at least a mile or something away from any residential area that's organic eh? the the soil has to have a certain ph and certain levels of minerals in the soil that is organic so in other words you could grow a genetically modified fruit organically that's it you take two fruits put them together make a brand new fruit you know um, um the other day i went in the supermarket and i was looking at some purple cauliflower and some orange cauliflower yellow and some other color and i said watch this here but what, what is this you know broccoli flower that's a cauliflower mixed with broccoli even broccoli and cauliflower themselves you know what i mean have some sort of um, grafting and splicing that created them so they're not originally original foods yes it's good that you can be creative because we have been grafting food in the caribbean for a long time when you take a branch from something and stick it to something and tie it and you get some old brand new level um, guava mango and all kind of thing people graft fruits and food for a long time now the thing step up to a next level now where you you taking the cell and you putting it into something else and injecting it now what happens now it's not an ancient art anymore not the grafting art you know the grafting is one thing what you used to see your grandmother do and tie the, the, the one piece of the tree to the other piece and tie it with a rope and a, a cloth. That's an ancient science called grafting. But what they do today now, they catch a fish and take out a certain gene from the fish and inject it into a tomato. That's genetically modifying. And that same tomato now, that they put the fish gene in it so that it could withstand water and all of that stuff. That same tomato now, they plant it organically and package it and then it mark on organic tomatoes yeah but it having fish yes it was that have organic pig too i mean you have to understand so you can't get caught up the sort of point i'm making is that that while we're trying to figure out the the vocab of this grammar here these people killing us in the food so whatever celery potatoes whatever good stuff you think you're eating and it's rather worse if you're eating rubbish can then give you the real rubbish rubbish again not even the high grade rubbish can you have high grade rubbish you know man? you have high grade rubbish you have real junk cracker jack will drop out all your teeth and you have expensive cracker jack you know what i mean you have high grade rubbish even coca-cola you know I mean? most of the coca-cola is not one person make coca-cola you know? most of the coca-cola you see we drink that we really but you know what i mean in the third world is low grade coca cola you know what i mean yeah some of the beers that people drink when you go and you get the real thing and you drink it you say wait this is rich because you get it weight made but what they bring down here is the syrup and they mix it with water and put it in a cap and sell it to you and you think it's the the real thing you have the real thing you know what i mean so the point i'm making is that they're killing us in the food when it's so-called healthy food, you don't think they know you're running into the whole store, the whole food store, the health food store. They know you're running into your, for your Brazil nuts and your cashew nuts. They know that. They know you want your sea moss. They know how to put sea moss together too, you know. Especially if they could package it, package it, it and put it in a ready-made drink for you. Oh, that's the worst catch. That's how they catch you when they ready make it for you. Yeah, and it's not just huh, lead mercury poison aids syphilis uh dengue fever ebola remember when the woman in africa leave africa and came back to america from texas and she came in with ebola all of a sudden they find the cure for ebola but before that no no cure was there but just make somebody that not supposed to catch it catch it and come into the territory where it should not be found all of a sudden she well set up she cleaned she good up to today, the nurse in Texas. You remember the story. So that is just to show it's all a plot. 
it well set my brothers and sisters and you could hear it straight in that um rendition that was read there a moment ago but you see most of us we just turn our heads we don't want to hear this it's all right i have a job i'm good i'm just trying to pay my mortgage and send the kids to college that's where we are we don't see the reality of this world and how it's beating down on us but i hope women people wake up one day that's the far I live. But anyway, give thanks for your presence with us. Let me just remind you again, remember the spring equinox. Just make sure you get your tickets, man. Not for the equinox, for, for to, to get here wherever you are <laughs> and come and spend five days and nights with us, you know, Green Castle Hill, of course, the experience. And let me just say once again, and for those who, who need more understanding of the experience, remember, of course, the book Anu. Our book, Anu, Ancient and Modern, that's the book, Anu, Ancient and Modern, that speaks about the spirit of Antigua and goes deep into the sands of Greencastle Hill. Of course, that is one of our e-books. When you email us, precise at 27 at gmail.com, you could ask us about the book, Anu, and uh, it is only $20 US for the book, the book, Anu, as well as the book, the biblical land of israel the true biblical land of israel definitely get a copy of each book the true biblical land of israel and of course the book Anu. and don't forget man the night of the black tiger have you received your copy of the night of the black tiger as yet the divinity of marcus messiah garvey don't make a next marcus garvey or they come and you know get the copy of the night of the black tiger man yeah, it's a shame, man. I mean, they got no documentary. I'm telling you, there's nothing put together yet that can compare to the Night of the Black Tiger as it relates to expressing the proper mystical divinity of Marcus Messiah Garvey. That's our third full length documentary. Get it for the children, man. I mean, it's an exciting watch and definitely will uplift the spirit and the thought. The Night of the Black Tiger. And of course, as I said, the book Anu, the e-book Anu, and the e-book The True Biblical Land of Israel. And while you're at it, just subscribe, man, to the shock of the hour. You know what I mean? Just subscribe to the nightly radio program. Yeah, man. And definitely remember, we have the monthly subscription. We have the six-month subscription. And we have the yearly subscription. Yeah, man. So it done. There's enough things we have to offer. We have enough love to offer. We have enough uh, frequency to give. All you have to do is continue to stay close to us, and everything is blessed. Yeah, remember, if you know your Bible and you do not know your history, the knowledge of your Bible will become a mystery, and it takes some realize to realize the real lies that are amongst us. Give thanks for your presence. Holy money will I Selassie Rastafari give thanks to the life giver. Blessed love.